Did I do it? Did it work? Hey, I'm Joanne the Devoted Bookworm. Today we're going to talk about 112263 by Stephen King. The first part of this review will be spoiler free. Then I will give you a warning before I let any spoilers fly. If you've watched some of my other videos, you know that I like to try things out from some of the books that I've read. And from this book, I decided I wanted to try out time travel. So I pushed the lever on toward even greater speed. So I thought, and I thought, and I thought, and I tried to come up with ways that I could time travel, but none of them worked. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? The best I could come up with was crossing time zones when you're traveling. Did I do it? Did it work? I did it! It's a Christmas miracle! Now, I don't really like scary or creepy books. I avoid horror. It just, I don't like how it makes me feel. So I've kind of steered clear of Stephen King books just because of what I've heard other people say about them. But then I saw somebody mention this book and I was intrigued. I thought it sounded really interesting. So I put it on hold at the library and I got it. And then I was scared. Oh no. What have I done? And not because it's a pretty hefty book. What if it's scary? What if it gives me nightmares? What if it keeps me up at night? What if I hate it? What if I don't hate it? Finally, I decided to just take a deep breath and give it a try. If I started feeling disturbed or scared, I could always stop reading it. I'm glad that I decided to try because I really enjoyed it. I thought it was an interesting book. The book starts by introducing Jake Epping, an English teacher from Maine. One day, his friend Al shows him that there is a portal in his storeroom to 1958. Al then convinces Jake to go back in time and stop the JFK assassination, which happened on November 22nd, 1963, or 112263. So Jake becomes George Amberson. He starts a new life surrounded by things from the past. He falls in love, he meets Lee Harvey Oswald, but is he able to stop the JFK assassination? I liked imagining what it would be like to go back in time 60 years and, and just live there for a little while and see what it's like and wear the clothes that they wore and taste the food that they ate and just walk around and see what life really was like back then. What would I miss? What would I be relieved to leave behind? What would the culture shock be like? And how hard would it be to fit in? It would be a big change. Now, if I could time travel, would I rather travel to the past or to the future? Now, I am interested to find out what's going to happen in the future, but I think I'd rather travel to the past and experience all of the things that I've learned about in history. I could see what medieval castles were like. I could meet Jesus Christ spend a couple of days on the Titanic. I would, I would leave before it hit the iceberg though. What about you? Tell me in the comments where you would go if you could time travel. I really enjoyed this book and I'm glad I gave it a chance. I'll probably try reading more Stephen King books in the future. Okay, it's decision time. There will be spoilers in the next part of the video. So if you haven't read 112263, you have to decide if you're gonna stop the video, go read the book, and then come back and finish the video, or you can just finish the video and soak in those spoilers. It's up to you. You've been warned. Time travel is hard to do in a story. I always have so many questions, and then I always see all the holes and the problems that the time travel creates. King explained a lot of the problems by having each new trip into the past create a new timeline string. The past basically reset itself every time they went back to the past again. But I felt like some of my questions were never really answered. It was kind of like, 
none of the characters really understood how it worked, so it was kind of left at, uh, I guess we'll never know. I guess when you're reading a story, you have to have a certain amount of suspension of disbelief. Like, when you are reading a book about magic. Rick the Sempra! You have to just kind of accept that there's magic and maybe you never find out why some people have more magic than others and where does the magic even come from and... But when time travel is involved, I always have a really hard time stepping back. I'm always nitpicking and, well, what about this? And, oh, but if that happened, then wouldn't this happen? And then, oh, they'd disappear if that happened. They wouldn't even be alive. I do feel like this book worked better than some of the other time travel stories that I've read because basically time travel ended up almost destroying everything. And so he had to go back into the past again and just reset everything to save the world, basically. So he ended up resetting everything that he had done while he'd been in the past. Another time travel story that I think did a good job of it was The Time Traveler's Wife by Audrey Niffenegger. Don't worry, I don't think this is a spoiler. Because he didn't have control over where he time traveled to or when it happened or anything like that. The times he was in the past don't change anything because he was a part of that past. So he wasn't going back to change something or fix something. He was already a part of that past. So since he's not really changing anything, I think it works. I liked that the past was obdurate. I was pretty sure I knew what that word meant from the context of the book but I looked it up just in case. Nothing to be ashamed of. It was fitting that the past was pushing back on Jake. The past knew what was supposed to happen and it was fighting back. In that way, the past was almost its own character in the book and I loved that. I admit that I was sad that Jake had to let Sadie go. I was hoping that there would be, they'd figure out some way that they could be together, but I guess, it wasn't meant to be. I thought it was a nice touch that they got to dance together one last time at the end of the book. How do you think Stephen King handled time travel in this book? What other time travel stories do you love? I just stumble over my words all the day long. Slow down. Ha. <sighs> A little bit toasty in here. Oh, that feels good. <coughs> Don't choke on your spit. This was a public service announcement.